This video contains graphic depictions of a fish being filleted. Viewer discretion is advised. Down in the meadow in a little big pool swam Three little fishes and the mama fishy too Swim, said the mama fishy, swim if you can And they swam and they swam all over the dam Boop, boop, didn't dead and want em Shh, boop, boop, didn't dead and want em Shh, boop, boop, didn't dead and want em Shh, and they swam and they swam all over the dam Hi, I'm Ben from the Kissing the Cook website, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at how easy it is for home cooks like us to fillet a fresh fish. Now, I know you don't actually have to fillet your own fish, you can go out and buy fillets, but this is a chance to give your meal a high quality main ingredient and, as an extra bonus, have pieces left over at the end that you can use to make a fresh homemade fish stock. Now, when it comes to the fish that we'll be filleting, there really are two different kinds. A flatfish has a spine that runs down the middle of its body, and the ribs extend out in both directions. You'll also find that a flatfish has both eyes on the same side of its body. In contrast to the flatfish, a roundfish has a spine located at the top fin, and the ribs only extend down, like a comb. A roundfish has one eye on each side of its body. The way you fillet a flatfish is very similar to the way you fillet a roundfish, but it's not exactly the same. The fish we'll fillet in this video is a croaker, which is a small round fish. Filleting a flat fish will have to wait for another day and be the subject of another video. Now the other item to get into before we meet our fish is the knife itself. Now it's possible to fillet a fish with a regular knife, but the job is made easier and a bit neater by using a fillet knife if you can get one. I have my fillet knife right here, and just as an aside, I have it covered by a, uh, a knife blade cover that I like to make out of, uh, you know, those, you go to the stationery store and you buy those report covers, they're the clear plastic sheets, and then there's a, a plastic rib that slides along the closed end to hold the sheets in. I like to buy those, throw the clear plastic part away, and use the rib portion, cut down to the proper size, as a, uh, a blade cover for my knives. Now, it's, there's probably somebody somewhere selling something like that for a lot of money, but here's a way for you to do it a lot less expensive. Anyway, the difference between a regular knife and a fillet knife is very simple. The fillet knife has a bit of a bend to it. Not a lot, but just enough to make some of the angles we might have to deal with when we're either filleting the fish or removing the skin to make some of those angles a little bit easier. The most important thing is for the knife to be very, very sharp. That will make the filleting process a lot neater and a lot easier. Meet Fred. Fred is a croaker fish who has been kind enough to volunteer to help us today. Now, when you buy a fresh fish, it will usually be scaled. The scales will be removed, see? And also gutted, meaning the scales and stomach, etc., uh, have all been removed for you. And that's something you want, because scaling and gutting a fish can get kind of messy. First, you want to take your fillet knife, and there'll be some fins on the fish, one right in the vicinity of the gill. You want to cut that one off. Just get that one off. There'll be a couple on the bottom, one toward the, one toward the fish's head. Cut that off. Another toward his tail. Get that one off as well. Next, you want to find his gills. So here's where the gill is. There it is. And you want to make two cuts halfway down, down to the, the, the rib cage. And the reason I'm using two cuts there in kind of a, a, a kind of an angle like that is to be able to get around the gill to conform to the shape of the gill and then make a similar cut halfway down toward the uh, uh, toward the tail. Now we're ready to go to the, the fin along the back and start making our cuts which will make the fillet. We're going to go along that back fin and what I'm doing here is using the tip of the knife to start cutting gradually, little by little, along the spine. I'm using the spine. For this first cut, I'm using the spine as a guide and keeping all my cuts starting with on top of the spine and then moving further inward in a series of passes, but always keeping them above the rib cage. Use that rib cage as a guide. Try to 
try to run the knife along the rib cage. And the important thing here is you're not doing this all with one cut. You're doing a, a series of passes, each one going, oh, maybe half an inch or so uh, further than the one before, about half an inch or so deeper than the one before. This way you get a, a reasonably clean fillet that you won't have many bones to pull out of. We'll be pulling the bones out later. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll have as few as possible. Just keep making a series of passes, using the rib cage as a guide, each time a little deeper than the time before. One by one, take your time. Keep, keep the cuts as clean as possible. And eventually, as you go deeper and deeper, you're going to reach the point at which you've now penetrated the other end of the fish, what would be the bottom of the fish, the belly. And because of the cuts we made before at the gill and at the tail, we need to make that one a little better. Because of the cuts we made before at the gill and at the tail, that lets us separate out the fillet. Right. We, we ran along the rib cage, so we got a pretty good fillet there. Now you can do that again to the other side. Wind up with two fillets from a round fish. Now it's time to remove the skin. Now you can keep the skin on. Some people do cook the fish with the skin on it. But assuming you want to remove the skin, the first thing you want to do, bring the, the fillet to the edge of your counter, to the edge of your table, and start making a cut with the knife just at the to separate the beginning of the of the skin and the, and the fish meat. Now what you're going to do is using both hands you're going to be making the knife go back and forth but essentially staying in the same place while you're using your other hand to pull the fish back and that will separate the skin. Just You're running the knife between the, the skin and the fish meat and it can separate off uh, fairly neatly. Okay, we've done this, we did this with our other fillet before. Now it's time to bone. Now to bone, you use a sophisticated piece of cooking equipment uh, called a needle nose pliers. Uh, now for heaven's sake, uh, use one that is not from your toolbox. Please buy a new one for, for this and keep it with your knife set. Uh, and what you're going to be doing, uh, using your fingers to just feel the fillet and find where the bones are, you're simply pulling the bones out one by one. This is where you want to do the best job you can filleting the fish in the first place so that there are as few bones as possible. Okay, just feel them with your fingers. Just run your fingers along. Nothing complicated about it. Feel, the, feel both directions with your fingers. When you come to a bone, just use the needle nose pliers and very carefully pull it out. It's kind of like pulling a splinter from your, your finger, something like that. Always checking because sometimes those bones are a little small. And there it is. We've got the bones out. The first one uh, we had uh, didn't have any uh, didn't have any bones in it, so that was good. And uh, there it is. <laughs>